Sir. It's a lot of money, I'm sure. sure. But humans, they look at different situations or they look at different people. They look at from their ideas, their perspective is based on their experiences. Um, and most of the time it is to benefit themselves. How do you, but whereas the holy ones, when they look at situations, they are looking with the Lord of Allah, how do you change your perspective so that you are moving away from your own personal perspective and trying to understand the, the eyes of the holy ones, how they look at situations and understand them? That's why Allah had sent 124,000 prophets so that humankind will look not through the eyes of the holy ones, not through the eyes of Allah, but through the eyes of the spirit. It is not like there's two different things and they are competing with one another. The way you look at your life and the way Eulia look at your life or their life or this life. It's not, they're not two opposite things equal, you understand? Haq is not equal to Batil. Batil is not equal to Haq. Uh, correct is not equal to uh, wrong. Wrong is not equal to truth. They're not equal. We have to get away from this duality. This is still a duality that over 1,000 years ago, people, Muslim saints, Allah, they're still saying, move away from this duality. Come to Ahad. Ahad. One. Choose one. Don't choose two. Forget about the Christians. They are three. Finish. But always two. And this two, light and dark. This, 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 this. This is, was a religion. And this is what so many people, especially in that part of the world also, that today they become Muslim, they were holding on very tightly to. Because there's light, there's this, there's this, there's this. But... The prophets are saying, come to one, one, oneness. Because come to one means only one exists, the rest doesn't exist. You understand? That one is false. False has no real existence. The shadow has no real existence. The shadow is because of the object. And in reality, the object doesn't have an existence if there is no light. If everything is in complete darkness, the object doesn't exist too. It's when the light is hitting, the object exists. And when the light is hitting, the object has a shadow. Is that shadow real? No. The shadow is because of the object. This object, it only comes alive, comes real when there is a light that is coming there, shining. We cannot say, now, way I look at it, and way awliya look at it, how are we going to look at how awliya are looking at it? First, people on the way of haq, they must know that the way we're looking at it is not real. Otherwise, you're always going to be fighting. You're just going to say, but this is my identity. But this is their identity. This is my identity. This is their identity. What is our identity? Our ego does not have an identity. The identity of the ego is not haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our spirit. Our spirit is our identity. And the identity and the way that our spirit looks is the same as the way that the awliyaullah look, the way the prophets look, and Allah looks because our spirit is always in submission to Allah. He's not fighting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the prophets have been sent to make us to wake up and say, look, 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 you're looking at it like this. But this is your ego that is interfering. This is your nafs that is interfering. This is your desire. This is the dunya. This is your arrogance that is interfering. This is not how your spirit is looking. And they're teaching us not only how to look through their eyes, no, but to look through the eyes that Allah has created us with through our spirit. Do you understand? Because however it is, you cannot look through someone's eyes. Your eyes is always your eyes. You cannot, no? You can look at the same thing, but you can never look with that person's eyes to that thing. It's impossible. But you can try now to look at it 
Okay, I'm looking at it like this. This one is looking at it like that. Now I can try to get myself up and go over there and look at it from this angle. This is what we can do. Still, it is not through his eyes, but we're looking at it to how he is seeing it. How are you going to do that? Our spirit is not fighting with Allah. Only our ego is fighting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the prophets, they're reminding us about our spirit, and then this is, we are remembering, it's not something new. Remember means you always know, but you forget. And they're, oh, yeah, 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 I remember. That is the spirit. It's not nothing new, it's not teaching. It is remembering. Remember, you forgot, you were drunk. Now you wake up a little bit. Oh yes, I remember, and I remember, and I remember. So, how you're saying to look at it like that? How you're saying <sighs> to look with the nur of Allah? Don't give yourself too much importance. Whenever you give yourself too much importance, look at it through your way. Stop. Check yourself. I'm, I'm looking at this in my way. What did Prophet say? What did my Shaykh say? Check yourself. I'm responding to this way. I'm always responding. <sighs> Let's try to put him in front. How he is going to respond. How he is going to react to this. Then, step by step, they will guide you to look and to handle things according to how Allah wants you to. You understand? That is the meaning that you're putting your shaykh as your guide. You're putting your shaykh as your qibla. You're putting your shaykh in front. You're not putting yourself. Don't give me this thing. We're saying you have to do that. Yeah, but I'm very weak. That is another trick of shaitan and your ego. You understand? They say, you have to do that. Yeah, I know I have to do that. Why don't you do that? I'm very weak. That is another trick that the ego is playing. You dare to say that in front of Allah, his prophet? Huh? You betray the prophet, you disobey him, and then they say, why are you doing I'm very weak. No, you cannot. You cannot say that. You don't give yourself any excuse. That is giving yourself an excuse. First excuse, no excuse. First, you have to blame yourself. Because I'm disobedient. And if you really understand that you are disobedient, you're going to stop being disobedient. Because being disobedient is burning yourself. Can anyone tell me, you put your hand into the fire, and you don't feel nothing, and you say, yeah, I'm very weak. You pull yourself. Instinct. You don't even think about it, right? It feels up. You, you take it out. That is what disobedience is, putting yourself into the fire. And if you are sincere, every disobedience is going to burn you. You're going to feel the burn and you're going to say, oh, I cannot do that. I have to find ways not to do that. Simple. That's why this is connected to putting your sheikh there. This is connected to having your sheikh with you. This is connected to rabita. This is connected to taqwa. This is connected to being aware that Allah is always with us, closer to us than our jugular vein. That is being aware that Allah is closer. That's not putting yourself something in between you and Allah. But this, it takes control. This is what makes man a man, not an animal. Animal is, oh, they just go. They don't think, they don't pull back, they don't control. But we are not created as animal. Allah has given us control. Some control Allah has given us more than animals, definitely. Some control Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that we don't even have to think. You put your hand into that fire, you're not thinking. To say, oh, my hand is burning, oh, there's pain, oh, I have to take it out. Are you sure you want to take it out? Maybe you're too weak not to take it out. Maybe. No, you immediately you take it out. So many times in life, something that burns you and gives you pain, immediately you stop. That's also given to us. We have to make that to become more alive. Uh, then you have to watch. Uh, you have to think. After that thing is finished, you have to think again. What happened there? 
I did this. Why you did that? Could you have done this one? Uh, this one, how about this one, this one? You're checking yourself. Don't give yourself any excuse, but say, oh, don't say, oh, I did this because of this, because, no, no, can you do yourself? Can, can it be done better? Yes, that's how you're going to make progress. You're always going to think. If you're just going to say, I can't help it like this, I can't help it, especially for men. Women, Allah has put them through certain situations where, yes, they cannot help it. You cannot. Something happens to your body and it's connected to the mind, connected to the heart. That's why Allah is saying, when it comes to that, you're not even obligated for you to pray. It's not. But not for men. There's no excuse for the men to say, I can't help myself. What, you woman? They have no control. Allah has given that. They have no control over it. Understand? So, yes, that's why the first step is shariat. Shariat is what? You have to control. Looks like Fred. Hmm? Inshallah. So slowly, step by step, inshallah, Rahman. This is something that we have to know because all we want in this is to have peace. With all of this, we want to have peace in our hearts. We want to have Islam. We want to have peace. Peace is from Allah. Peace is coming from Allah. And peace is returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot make up your own peace. Because Allah is the creator of peace. You have to go to what Allah says peace is. Maybe to you, oh, if I follow what Allah says peace is, it's going to hurt me. I don't like that. You have no right because Allah is the creator of that peace, not you. Some peace is going to cause you war. Before you reach to that peace, you have to have war. Hmm? They're saying World War I is what? The war to end all wars. They're claiming that. But from World War I up till today, non-stop war is happening. It was not the war to end all wars. It was a war to end all peace. Because there was a time when Islam stopped ruling. So how are we going to get this peace now? Something you're going to read, something you're going to look in a museum. Oh, you get peace from the people who have that. But if you look at their lives, maybe it's not peaceful. Who is teaching us the peace of Allah? The prophets. Look at their lives. Are their lives peaceful? No, their lives are not peaceful. But they came to teach mankind peace, correct? Correct. Who can say the prophets came to teach mankind violence and war and hatred? Who can say that? So the prophets came to teach us peace, but their lives are not peaceful. But it's interesting because what you see with your eye is different and what they perceive with their heart is different. Which one are you going to look at now? This is important. Inshallah Rahman. This is slowly, inshallah, step by step, we're trying to understand this. And what is the meaning of sohbat in a tariqat, in a Sufic way? This is not a class and this is not a lecture what it means to understand the sohbat. At yeah, time, we'll try to have the peace of Allah to return. Inshallah, Rahman. Right. Welcome to you. Yeah. Welcome to me. Welcome to this holy day, Inshallah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. What else we have? Anything else? Any other questions?